bursts through the doorway and finds the triplets jamming a deer head on a stuffed bear's body. They stare, and the deer's jaw drops. Meanwhile, Merida runs and hides as Fergus and the clansmen charge past. Continuing on, she trips over toppled furniture. Getting up, she finds a partially open door. It shows Eleanor scolding the boys as they put the animal parts back where they belong. Spotting her, the boys and Eleanor both gesture for Merida to explain. A witch turned mum into a bear. It's not my fault. We've got to get out of the castle. I need your help. Oh, all right. You can have my desserts for two, three weeks. Okay, fine. A year. The triplets nod. Searching the castle, Fergus and the others halt. Did you hear this? <laughs> triplet roars into a pot, his brother waves a cooked chicken on a stick, creating the shadow of a bear on a wall. The men stampede through a corridor. Reaching the top of a staircase, they spot the shadow on another wall and run back the way they came. The shadow appears on the third floor and they rush upstairs. Throwing their weapons, they chase the shadow down another passage. Hubert and Harris drop through a trap door and the men run over top. Hamish performs a bird call. In her comfortable dark teal dress, Merida leads Eleanor around a corner. Come on, Mom! On her hind legs, the bear knocks over furniture in a tapestry. Hiding in a wooden chest, Hubert and Harris sneak past the men. One waves the chicken. The men dash around the corner and trip over the chest. In a stairwell, Hubert and Harris dart through a little door. The men rush upstairs and charge right past it. Fergus steps outside. In a single file, the men run around the perimeter of the main tower's roof. It must have sprouted wings. was carried away by a, a giant body. A dragon, perhaps. Bail in that castle. Does it make sense? Carry open doors. It's got big giant paws. Let's just get inside. Fergus tries to open the doors. It's locked. Dingo was the last up. I dropped it open with a stick. Inside, the boys ditch the stick, then ride a rope down a shaft. Spying on some handmaidens, Hamish stays Merida and Eleanor with a hand. Spit it out, Maudie. Oh, for goodness sakes, Maudie, would you get it? The triplet lands in a hearth with a chicken on his head. Maudie bolts, and the handmaidens follow her off. Hamish beckons Merida and Eleanor. Eleanor bumps her head. She squeezes through the doorway, then falls on her rear and slides downstairs to the kitchen floor. Knocking pots and pans off the walls, the eight-foot bear rises to her feet. She bumps into more pots and pans hanging from the ceiling. The triplets reunite, Hubert and Harris now covered in soot. Hamish sneezes, not hangs from his nose. They'll be fine, won't you, boys? He inhales the snot. Mom, we've got to hurry. Merida faces the triplets. I'll be back soon. Go on and help yourself to anything you want. As a reward. Merida and Eleanor leave. The triplets hurry over to a table and stare at the enchanted cake. Outside, a rope of kilts tied together leads our view down the tower's outer wall. The last of the men, Wee Dingwall, climbs down to the ground and joins the others. Oh. Right. As Fergus leads the men off, we glimpse their bare bottoms, now at the circle of standing stones.